some of you guys remember this 432 and uh, I had the engine out a couple years ago I rebuilt it and a friend of mine did the machine work but something just doesn't sound right you know it runs for a couple minutes and it kind of like seizes up so I was talking to my buddy today about it and he said uh, bring it back in and maybe he'll check it over but I think that the piston to bore clearance is too tight and it's been sitting out here for about two years hasn't been used since the Rhinebeck mowing which was 2015 and it looks like crap unfortunately because it's not stored indoors but I was gonna pump up the tires and try to bring it over to the garage and see if we can't take this 14 horse Kohler off of it and uh, do a tear down and we'll mic the cylinder and we'll mic the piston and see what that spread is and just do a general go over to see did I screw something up putting it together or is the tolerance just too tight on the bore so that's our little game plan got a jumper pack hooked up to it and I got the tires pumped up and I have no idea I mean this battery is wicked old and I barely have these things clamped down there let's see if we can get anything out of it nothing there I might have to take the hood off in order to get a better uh, connection to my battery because I have a, it's actually a battery out of a Subaru in here and uh, it's a little, it's a little too wide for the, for the area here that the jumpers can go over. I don't want my pilot to park out on the hood, so I'm trying to do something really dumb here and just kind of clamp this on half-assed around the side of the thing or something, but let's see. This, this can help. This turned around this way. Let's see. Yeah, let's see what happens now. Got nothing. I don't believe there's any safeties on this thing. I just don't have a good connection. Yeah, the battery gauge isn't going down at all, so I think I gotta take the hood off and try to move the battery so that I can actually get a connection on there. Pain in the butt, huh? So I got the hood unscrewed and I noticed this. This thing's been sitting here so long that a freaking tree is growing up through it. Tell me that's not pathetic <laughs> so let me get this battery jumper out of the way and take the gas cap off and we'll pull the hood off and now hopefully we can get a grasp on that battery and actually try to jump start it let's see we'll put this on there get this on the other side hit that and we'll come over here cranks good and it gets to a point like that where the motor has so much compression you can't turn it over so what i was doing is like coming back here and spinning this thing back here hear how the bendix is engaged there we go it just came out but uh i think what i gotta do is give it a squirt of carb cleaner in here probably the fuel is all sucky in there so <laughs> there's a strawberry plant growing up over the carb here let me take this air filter off if I can. Let's see, Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Let me get my carb cleaner. I'll be right back. A couple shots of carb cleaner in there. So we'll try it again. Probably has no spark. If it won't go off the carb cleaner. 
probably got no spark. Probably the points need to be cleaned or something. This should have went by now off the carb cleaner. There we go. Wanted to go. Piece of junk. Come on, ring gear. There you go. Let's see. Piece of junk. Piece of junk. Come on, you stupid ring gear. Get another spray. Probably got it flooded now, right? hear it starting to knock and uh what i ran it for just two or three minutes that's it if even two minutes i drove it 200 feet probably and i could already hear it starting to knock so tomorrow night we'll take the motor off and dissect it and see what the hell is going on in there i also wanted to change the flywheel also this has an old style flywheel that had an under flywheel stator magneto system and it's not charging so the stator part of it's trashed so I wanted to take a flywheel from this engine over here which is a 12 horse but it's the same flywheel and I want to put that flywheel on it that has a newer style modern 15 amp stator and then I can actually get a charging system out of this thing also which would be key so stay tuned back over here where it was parked you see this stupid tree here ay 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 i'll pull it out all right no more growing trees in my gravelies yo and uh it was sunk in the ground so it didn't want to back up so we got that out and um, anyways we moved it that's the cool part so we'll dissect it and come back a little history on this uh, 432 it was actually my first 400 series rider that I got and I bought it on um, eBay and it was like four and a half hours away from me. At the time I didn't have a truck that could travel that far and uh, I asked the seller randomly in a, in a message, I said, would you be willing to ship it to me? And he said, sure, I've never been to Connecticut, I'll give it a shot. So he drove from uh, New York State to Connecticut and... Uh, I gave him like a hundred bucks extra to ship it, which was very fair on my end, instead of wasting nine hours round trip. And the motor came in a box, it was all in uh, parts because it had a blown rod. And then long story short, it was past 30 over and uh, I ended up getting a different block, which we were able to salvage. 
and it was a nice machine. I had it in my barn the whole time. And then for the last two years, it's been in the backyard here under a tarp most of the time. But I find that the tarps are sucky because they seem to be trapping the moisture under them. Then the thing rusts out faster than it would if there was no tarp. But uh, I'm dying to take this thing apart and see what the problem is. You know, I don't know if it's something stupid like just a bearing or if it's actually the bore. I really think it's the bore. And uh, like the piston starts to heat up and then you end up getting some seizing. But it runs perfect. I mean, you heard how great it ran. Uh, but it just heats up after about two minutes and starts knocking and then it's all over. So I don't know if it's the connecting rod or if it's the piston but we'll just measure everything and uh, check our tolerances and if something's out we'll bring it back to the machinist and he's willing to open up that bore if he needs to so anyway stay tuned this this project won't be finished soon it'll take a while